My name is Vilin Yuryev, and I'm a SharePoint developer for a very long time. Today we're going to talk about the DevOps pipelines. As I mentioned, uh, Vesa mentioned uh, it, it covers SPFX for now, but Vesa, this is, uh, as you said, more related to ILM APIs, and in future we'll show how you can add uh, .NET Core or PMP Core components here and build and bundle and deploy along with the, the SharePoint framework packages. This is maybe just the start. So today we're going to talk about uh, how to set up a different configuration for your SharePoint framework solutions. So you have different environments, and uh, those packages uh, um, might require different uh, configuration. Uh, for the dev environment, running new features, and a different configuration for the production environment that is supposed to be stable when uh, the new features are not supposed to be there if they're not uh, ready. So this is a follow-up from the previous two demos. That's the demo number three, and we already covered build uh, basics and release basics. So uh, this is a follow-up. Some things uh, might not be demoed here, so I recommend you go there if, if you're missing a piece of information and see what is in there. And today we're going to just follow up on our previous discussion. So let me just, I'll be using GitHub as well again. My source code is in GitHub and it's linked to uh, Azure DevOps. So uh, this is the demo, how we ended the demo uh, last time. We had a development release uh, task here and production release, and we were releasing a package to our dev environment and the same package to our production environment. So what it means is in our uh, artifacts, we were, we were having that package, SPFX package, that we were releasing to both environments. However, this is not always optimal because in many of the cases, oh, I just... In many of the cases, you have uh, you have different setup. So ideally, you will release uh, the package bundled and packaged with a setup for the dev environment, and the same package with a configuration more suitable for the production environment. And at the end of that build, you have that package listed here with like. Basically, we have two packages that are the same, but they have different configuration. And by different configuration, I mean, like, I'll go to the source code here, and I'll show you my solution. My solution has ice cream shop and ice cream lorry web parts, but the ice cream shop is ready for production, and the ice cream lorry is not ready for production, and the business doesn't want to include that into the other package. So the way we can control our features is from the config JSON here, and we have both web parts, but uh, the difference is should be like, uh, I don't need that for production. It's not ready. So we have to exclude it. But somehow we have to include it in the production. So how we do that? Another uh, business scenario might be that you have some app settings. For example, my app settings are bundled with the package. And I have different values here that I'm using, that my web parts are using as a shared values. And as I can see, I'm accessing the uh, dev tenant here. But for production, that value should be production. So I can hit the production tenant. That might be another scenario. Uh, and how we can change that on the fly, how we can change that with the builds and the releases. So uh, I will just save that, and uh, I will show you what we have here. So here we have a DevOps folder. I've created that. that has, that's not part of the SharePoint scaffolded project. So I've created that folder, and under that folder we have a build where all our build definitions are. We have release, where we have the release scripts, but we also have a folder called configurations. So in that folder, uh, we have a prod folder, and we might have QA, staging, whatever environment you have. And, and underneath, we have a config. And under the config, we have an our config JSON. So you can see that from this folder, I'm trying to replicate whatever is in that root folder. So under config, we have config here, we have config here, we have that JSON there, and we have that JSON there. So the difference here is uh, the, the, the dev JSON have both web parts. And that config here has the only, only the, the web part is so supposed to be in production. Then on the other hand, we have a source. 
And in that source, again, I'm trying to exactly replicate the same folder structure as is here. That's very important later. And in that very same structure, we have source, source, web parts, web parts, and then we have ice cream shop. We have it here. And then down below, we have the manifest. Right, and here we have the manifest, and you can have a different setup on even uh, even on a web part level. You might have that set to true, but when it goes to production, it should be false. In my case, I have a supports full bleed here, and I don't have it here. Probably the, the product owner decided that that web part is not suitable for full bleed, and in the next release we'll go without full bleed. But for now, in production, we are full bleed. And then on the app settings again. App settings, the same location as in the root folder. App settings, the same, absolutely the same folder structure. But here we have a prod. Um, and we have like um, the assets is different version or whatever. Now, how we put that into our pipeline? We already have those configurations here. But what we are supposed to do, so here is our build here. Our build definition is, again, the same YAML file from the previous time, but slightly modified. So we have trigger, that's master branch. We have a uh, compute here, a virtual machine to run the scripts. We install Node.js on that machine. So uh, we can uh, we can do things with Gulp. And then here is the, the, the interesting part here. So. What we are doing is we are copying all the files from the source directory. So that that is a variable that tells uh, Azure uh, Azure DevOps pipelines that the source directory in all the files in the source directory should be moved to a staging directory. So basically, just move to another folder, but not just to the staging directory, but staging slash dev. So I'll be moving all the files into that dev folder, and after I move all these files, I will say, go to that uh, folder, install all the modules, bundle and package the solution, and then zip it and make it available in Azure DevOps. So at the end, we have the dev package there. All we did so far is we've just moved the files, all these files from one folder to another, and we executed uh, the, the, the usual commands here to package. And this is our dev package, but for the production, then we continue, like we say, copy all the files again from that source directory into another folder that is a slash production, slash prod. So we move all the files again in that new folder, and here is the moment, the simple trick that we're doing to overwrite those files. So what I'm seeing here, uh, like that's the most important part of the demo, maybe. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying go to that folder, that prod folder, grab all these underneath, and move them back to the root folder. So what that will do is that will just override everything that you have here with everything that is underneath here. So you can control multiple multiple settings like that. You can have even your uh, package JSON that is running old packages here, and then you can override it. And after you override it, you you execute npm install gulp bundle and package, and that should give you your production package. It's very simple but very powerful because it's running under one second, so it's efficient. And it gives you different configurations for different environments. Again, at the end, as I've said, we just bundle package and we make that prod available. So I'll do a small change to see how this works because I already have that pipeline prepared. But I'll do a small change in the files for you to see that it's just running. So that's my production environment. And you can see the app settings here. They're saying prod one to three. Um, and then I'll change that. Let me just refresh. It's supposed to say prod only. Okay. Now, and then we have the other one that is saying dev one, two, three. And I'll just change those and, and start the build for you just to see that it's just working. Uh, where is it? App settings. Change it to dev demo and put something else here. Like, uh, where is it? Configurations, source, app settings, prod demo. And then we'll say git commit everything, config change, 
There we go. Git push to my repository. And that should just uh, start the build. Okay, let's see what's happening. We go to our DevOps and we go to our build and we are trying to see if something is going to change. Oh, there you go. So we have a build and that build will try to execute all these steps in the YAML file. So it will try to find available agent. I'm using the free agents that Microsoft offer and it will try to run all these steps one by one. While we are waiting, I'll just recap what just happened in the build. I have two or three slides here. So again, we're copying from the source directory all the files as they are into a new folder called dev. And we have everything as is. The only part is that we're compiling whatever we have in the source. Now, on the other side, the, the prod package, we're copying everything into a prod folder but there is a nice animation here, like we are overriding whatever is in the source with those configurations from, from, from that folder, and then we do the compilation. Now, this is not changing anything in your source control. So this is running just on the, the VM that is uh, creating the build, then that VM is destroyed, so your source control is not ruined. You don't have to do anything else. It's just one time override here for your information. And another thing is why, why we have a prod and a dev folder here. Why don't, don't I, why can't I just override, run npm install, then override again, and run npm install in the same directory. Well, uh, for me, it's simple because I'm, I'm moving those to a separate prod and, and, and dev folders, simply because if you have a package JSON with different packages and you execute npm install, um, that might cause conflicts, right? You npm install for dev and then you npm install for production in the same directory. That might cause conflicts. <clears throat> That's the reason. And the build is already there. Uh, there is just one more thing I want to show you because the build is not enough. We have to go to the release and the release is one minor change as from the previous time. So in the release, I'll just go and edit and show you what changed there. So, here is my release file, and in my release file, I, I have an extra, I have an extra variable here, and that variable is stored in the variables, and you have uh, an extra if else to say, okay, if that variable is true, is dev true, pick up the dev package and deploy it. If that variable is false, just deployed production package. That is the difference in, in, in here, and that variable is stored in the release pipeline, here in the variable. So you can control that variable, you're saying when you're, when you're running against the dev environment, set it to true, when you're running against the production environment, set it to false. Uh, we're just on time, so I don't think I'll have time to show you how this changed, but believe me, at the end of the day, this will change. Right, so this is how you can control your uh, your settings inside your package. And next time we'll talk about a parallel execution because uh, running any PM install twice in a sequence is taking too long. So in the next demo we'll show parallel execution and we will race Windows against Linux to see if we can break the myth that Linux uh, compiles Node.js code better. Okay, that's me, Vesa. Thank you, Valin. Thank you. Mm -hmm.